Boy, we all got quiet all at once. <laughs> <laughs> got a couple minutes yet, according to that clock. Dr. Weber, how's the atomic clock? You got 30 seconds left. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> It's okay now. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the regular board meeting of the Omaha Public Power District Board of Directors in our December meeting. Before we get started, I'd, we have a celebrity here today with, honoring us with their presence, and I'd like to introduce Mrs. Luann Weber in the back row. I understand it. <laughs> Welcome, Luann. We're glad to have you. Thank you. All right, Madam Secretary, we call the roll. Barrett. Yes. Kavanaugh. Gay. Here. Green. Here. McGuire. Here. Mines. Here. Ulrich. Here. Weber. Here. Item number two, announcement regarding public notice of meeting. Notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media, by publicizing the same in the Omaha World Herald and outlets, by displaying such notice on the arcade level of Energy Plaza since December 13, 2013, and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's <coughs> corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the Open Meetings Law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in this meeting room. Item number three, approval of the October 2013 Comprehensive Financial and Operating Reports and of the minutes for the last meeting. Move. Call roll, please. Garrett? Yes. Panama. Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Item number four, persons wishing to address the Board of Directors on a particular item are asked to approach the microphone as that agenda item is discussed. Comments will be heard following board discussion of the item and prior to a vote by the board. Persons wishing to address the board on all other matters will have an opportunity before the close of the meeting. Item number five, resolution number 5979. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the Board hereby affirms that the 2014 expenditures incurred by the district will be reimbursed to the district from the proceeds of tax-exempt debt of the district, but only if the issuance of such debt is deemed to be desirable by the district. The adoption of this resolution is and constitutes the taking of affirmative action by the district, acting through its Board of Directors, to preserve the right and option of the district to issue tax-exempt debt to reimburse 2014 expenditures which are incurred prior to the issuance of the district's debt. Second. 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 Mr. Chairman, like the motion mentions, this, it, what this will do is it will reserve the right if we choose to issue uh, 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 tax-exempt bonds through the year to help, to help pay for our, uh, our, our financing. Um, this is in no way commits us to to doing to ish, issuing bonds later on, but it just gives us the right to if we choose to sometime during the year. Can we do this every year. It's like a housekeeping thing, and the federal government requires us to do this. Any comments from the board members? <coughs> Any from the public? Seeing none, please call the roll. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. Prior to moving on to the next two resolutions, uh, uh, we're going to have a presentation like we did last month about the corporate op operating plan. So at this time, uh, we're going to have uh, Vice President Easterling come up and give us a presentation. <laughs> I'm assuming we need to uh, vacate the uh, screen. Yeah.
Well, good morning. Good morning. I'd like to provide an overview of the proposed 2014 corporate operating plan and, uh, and, and suggested or recommended tariff changes. The operating plan and the tariff adjustments, as you may recall, were presented in more detail um, last month. As we look at 2014, we have a number of uh, significant uh, challenges and opportunities uh, in front of us. Uh, the first is to improve Fort Calhoun Station regulatory uh, category. As we resume operations and we work post uh, restart to complete the remaining 0350 checklist items, uh, we be, we'll be working through those in an effort to get back into the reactor operator um, oversight process. Uh, returning to that matrix and then working toward operating excellence. Uh, secondly, OPBD is a member of the Southwest Power Pool. The Power Pool is in the process of establishing a day two market. This market is scheduled to start in the spring of 2014. In order to do that, we have a number of uh, processes underway internally uh, to work with SPP to make sure that our systems and processes are aligned and will function properly when that, that change occurs. Uh, we have four uh, business units today with employees that are involved in that. Next, uh, maintaining safe and reliable service. Uh, this, is, this is a high uh, priority item uh, for OPPD, whether we're providing normal service or we're restoring service after an outage or a storm event. We want to make sure that we do it efficiently and safely. There's a renewed emphasis, emphasis throughout the organization on employee safety and customer safety. On the regulatory side, I, I think I, it's fair to say that the future of the rec, electric utility industry has never been more uncertain. As we look toward that uncertainty and all the things facing us, we have to be proactive and we have to anticipate those changes to ensure that OBPD is positioned to achieve our mission. And the mission is to provide affordable, reliable, and environmentally, environmentally sensitive services to our customers. Um, next item, implementation of a stakeholder process. As you recall, a couple of months ago, uh, we presented and approved a new stakeholder process. That process will be placed into practice next year, 2014. It will provide a, an enhanced opportunity for customers to engage in providing input to the district around decisions and our planning processes. And last but not least, organizational operating efficiencies. Uh, we're always looking toward continuous improvement to ensure that we're doing things effectively, whether we measure that by it reducing the amount of time it takes to complete a, a task or a project, improving the quality of what we're trying to accomplish, or increasing productivity. Looking specifically at the 2014 budget, in total, it's $1,149,000,000. If you look at it by major category, uh, you can see those categories represented on the pie chart. In the right top, you'll see the, the blue uh, section, it's $270 million. That's fuel and purchase power, that represents 24% of our budget. Following that, we see the dark green, which is $529 million, which is non-fuel O&M. These two categories represent 70% of our budget. So this is the fuel, the purchase power, and the expense for operating and delivering the energy to our customers. Following around the circle, if you will, the next category is the lighter green at $138 million. This is our debt service. This is basically the mortgage. This is, these are the payments that we make to repay the financing costs of the infrastructure that we operate. The next section uh, represents payments in lieu of taxes. These are the funds that we pay to the counties and the cities in which we operate and serve customers. It's 32 million. That is 2.5% uh, of the total. The next area, the, the dark blue, 174 million, that's capital. Those are investments we're making into the system to replace aging infrastructure, to maintain reliability, and to provide additional capacity to meet future, future low growth. At the top, you'll see $6 million at a 12 o'clock position. Uh, that represents uh, deferred expenditures, those 0350 items I mentioned earlier with Fort Calhoun 
that's the completion of, of that uh, cost category. That's 0.5%. Turning from the corporate operating plan and looking at the tariff updates, uh, the first item is the FPPA. Uh, we're proposing to change the formula to include consumable costs. Consumables are chemicals and materials that are used directly in the production of electricity. An example of that would be lime that's used in our environmental processes at Nebraska City to remove uh, sulfur dioxide. Um, if you look at how energy is being priced in the SPP Day 2 market that I mentioned earlier, these consumables are factored into the price. And what we're proposing is to, to align the pricing on the retail side to, to be the, consistent with what we're doing on the wholesale side. That gives staff uh, the ability to, to see from one customer group to the other exactly how we're pricing and give us more focus to manage uh, effectively. Second item is to amortize the prior year true up over a three-year period. So each year we look at what we've collected in fuel cost, purchase power cost, versus what uh, was incurred. And at this point, we're looking at approximately a $48, $49 million under collection. That represents expenses associated with purchasing power and incurring higher fuel costs because Fort Calhoun Station has been on extended outage. The proposal allows us to collect $23 million of that $49 million in 2014 and defer the balance into 15 and 16, in other words, collect it over three years. <clears throat> There's no change associated with the fuel and purchase power adjustment because of these modifications. We'll maintain the current rate and still accomplish these revisions. The next item, uh, miscellaneous consumer service charge changes. Uh, we went through these uh, last month, so I'm, I'm going to kind of briefly go through these. Uh, the first one I, item is a service drop duck per lot charge. That's a little difficult to say. Um, this represents new lots that are being developed for residential customers. We've increased the charge and we required that new contracts that are being placed in um, include this duct. And the duct basically is a conduit that runs from the pedestal to the home so that in the future if there's a failure on that connection then there's a new line that can be run through the duct without disturbing the physical property where the line is currently buried today in the trench. The next item is reconnect charge. Today when a customer disconnects service for whatever reason and they desire to reconnect, there are two charges that are imposed and the charge amount depends on the time that the service occurs. During business hours it's $55. After business hours it's $120. What we're proposing is one charge that would be applied regardless of the time that the service is provided and that charge would be $75. The next item, simplify customer deposit policy. Uh, not all customers require um, a deposit, but those customers who do re require deposit may be due to poor uh, performance of payment in the past or a, a poor credit history. Um, today we look at the, the maximum monthly bill and we require deposit two times that bill. As you can imagine, depending on the, the residence, the bill amount differs. And what we're proposing is a single amount that would be applicable to each customer that makes the deposit. It simplifies it for the staff, allows them to provide faster service to the customer, and provides the, sus the customer with the opportunity to know what the deposit amount is before they make the application. And the charges, the proposed charge is $200. The next is curtail curtailment rates. Um, we have the provision today for large customers. We can interrupt service or curtail service if our accredited capacity is not available. This change basically says it doesn't have to be accredited. It could be our operating capacity. In other words, we're not able to operate at what we're accredited for and it's causing a reliability or a cost issue on the system. We can exercise this option. The next is uh, miscellaneous housekeeping charges. Uh, the first one is to remove uh, rate 232 from uh, the av availability of the level payment plan. The next one is to change the name of the late fee to uh, return payment fee and then to change the amount from $25 to $30 to reflect our current cost of, of that type of um, situation. 
And the last one is to, to clarify the OPPD holidays in the documentation around the disconnect uh, language. Next, uh, we talked about this last month at this meeting and the meeting before on the Tuesday, November 12th. The media was notified on that same day, the 12th, and today we're back uh, requesting approval from the board. If we put it all together and we, we project our average retail rate, which includes our residential customers, our commercial customers, industrial customers, our cents per kilowatt hour average is 8.37 cent, cents per kilowatt hour. If we compare that to the west, west, north, central region of the Midwest, uh, it's 8.97 cents. And then if we look at the national average, it's 10.39. Based on our cost with no rate increase projected in 2014, we'd be 6.7% below the regional average and 19.4% below the national average. Two independent reviews have been completed. Uh, New Gen Strategies and Solution, our consulting engineer, has reviewed the corporate operating plan and they provided the quote that you see uh, before you here. Uh, CHM2 Hill has reviewed the proposed changes to the fuel and purchase power adjustment and declared that those changes are fair, reasonable, and non discriminatory. In summary, the 2014 corporate operating plan is aligned with the corporate mission. Rates remain below the regional and national averages. Expenditures are sufficient to maintain system reliability. Re renewable resources account for 16.2% of the energy sales in 2014. And Fort Calhoun Station uh, resumes operations. Thank you. Resolution number 5980. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District hereby approves the 2014 corporate operating plan. Second. Okay, Director Kavanaugh, please. Thank you. The presentation is a good one from uh, Mr. Ishwin. Um, it's, um, it's lean. I think the adjustments we've made in some of our service charges seem to be fair and, and, and in line with uh, what they should be. And I uh, recommend approval. Very good. Any comments or questions from board members? Um, I, I have a couple. Uh, Edward, uh, when you mentioned tariff changes, um, I, I know that a tariff is a payment to a, a third body or whatever. Where, where are those tariff payments going to and what are they for? All of our regulated rates are included in what we call our tariff sheets, our rate schedules, and they're posted on our website. And you can go look at the different types of rate plans or tariffs that you can take service under. And so what we're proposing is changes in certain fees and certain language within those tariffs to bring them up to, to, to date. So it's, it's a technical term we use to, to describe our rate schedules. Okay. Anything else, Director? No, sir. Okay. Anybody else? Hi, Fred. Okay, Tim. Uh, I'd just like to commend Tim Burke and his team on the service drop duck charges um, to work through those things. I think, uh, well, OPBD in general, but your team did a good job. The development community had a little bit of, you know, it's changed. Yeah. So they had a lot of uh, communications back and forth, and it's it's a good change long term for OPBD. But the way we did it, I thought it was very professional of having several meetings explaining the process. And I know Jim Crist and who else, Tim, was helping uh, with that? Well, Mo Dogman Mo and Owens. Brian uh, Mayberry and the operations team yeah. as well participated. Uh, anyway, I was following that, and, and they did a great job representing us, and I think it worked out very well. Longer term, it'll be a, a good deal. Okay. So, 
and having those ducks, you know, in conduit will really help reliability in the future for many years to come. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Any from the, any comments from the public regarding the budget corporate operating plan? Good morning. Happy holiday. Thank you. I'm John Atkinson, Energy Policy Director at the Nebraska Wildlife Federation. As you know, we are very interested in OPPD's efforts to flatten the growth and capacity needed to meet OPPD customer owner needs at peak times, as well as the growth in megawatt hours needed to meet the energy needs in OPPD territory. The clean energy plan that we and other organizations presented nearly a year ago calls for a substantial increase in OPPD's commitment to and investment and demand side management strategies. We believe this is a critical part of a clean energy future and that increased commitment to demand side management, both capacity and energy, represents a low cost, low risk path forward for OPPD. We appreciate recently receiving information on OPPD's demand side management programs, including the budget information for past years. The information identifies some clear successes and we congratulate you on these. <laughs> Uh, the air conditioner management program that has reached nearly 19,000 devices, able to reduce OPPD's peak energy demand by over 28 megawatts. Nearly 700 new commercial high efficiency lighting projects. The commitment of 1% of OPPD retail sales to fund sustainability efforts, which the board started in 2007, has resulted in reducing OPPD's peak demand by over 55 megawatts through 2012 and 70 megawatts at 2013. This is certainly a very good start, but recognize that even 70 megawatts of peak reduction represents less than one-third of the total growth of OPPD's peak demand, which grew about 250 megawatts from 2007 to 2012. So there's clearly much more that can and should be done. We now understand that OPPD is in the process of establishing a new goal and a new long-term plan and that you have a consultant providing an updated study of demand side management potential. We and others hope we can provide some input and expertise in that area. We also remain frustrated that the basic OPPD budget information for these programs is not routinely part of the information made available to the public before the board asks for public comments on and then votes on OPPD's annual budget. As a public body, the OPPD board should welcome public comment on its proposed 2014 budget, but we cannot give you an informed opinion on the proposed budget if we are not allowed to know what is in it. This is a basic issue of transparency and good government. It also leaves us in an impossible position, an impossible situation. We would ask you to postpone a decision and make more information available for comment before you vote on the budget, but we realize it's already December and you need a budget going into 2014. As you move ahead, we offer you these strong recommendations. First, please improve the transparency of your budget process by providing more details on key parts of the proposed OPPD budget especially those of interest to OPPD stakeholders early in the process so the public can offer informed input as the budget is being considered and well before the board takes a final vote. Second, with respect to a new long-term demand side management goal and plan, we ask you to think big. At a minimum, set a general goal to offset all of the projected growth and capacity needed over the next five years through a combination of load management and energy efficiency programs. This would allow OPPD to continue to meet the energy needs of its customer owners without building expensive new power plants. Third, we urge you to take a serious look at OPPD's two older coal-fired power plants at North Omaha and Nebraska City One. It seems clear that to keep burning coal in these power plants would require a billion dollars or more 
in investments in scrubbers and other emission control technology to meet new environmental rules. We think there are clean energy alternatives that would allow OPPD to replace both the capacity and the energy from these two power plants with a combination of demand management, renewable energy like wind and solar, and energy storage technologies. As you and your consultor, consultant consider how cost-effective demand-side management strategies are, you need to consider the huge savings that could accrue to OPPD customer owners from avoiding the investment of a billion dollars or more to put scrubbers on those old coal power plants. Just imagine how much demand management and clean energy alternatives you could finance with a billion dollars or more. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to discussing these issues with you. Thank you. I just might say that uh, we hopefully going forward the stakeholder process, might, we are hoping that that does alleviate some of your concerns about transparency. But we'll see as we go through it. We'll work with you as we go forward. Thank you. Anybody else regarding the budget? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Barrett? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Motion carried. Item number seven, resolution number 5981. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District hereby approves, one, a revised fuel and purchased power adjustment rate schedule <coughs> to reflect the addition of the cost of consumable materials. Two, the amortization of $49 million in under-recovered fuel and purchased power costs <coughs> over a three-year period with $23 million collected in the 2014 FPPA rate and the remaining amount to be collected in the 2015 and 2016 FPPA rates. And three, miscellaneous revisions to various freight schedules as shown on Exhibit A, all to become effective January 1, 2014. I need a motion. So moved, Director Barrett. Aye. Second. Yep. Director Barrett? Second. Okay, we got it, I think. You get it, Deb? Yes. Okay. Director Barrett, your turn. Okay. Um, this is uh, requires a board action. Uh, these are... Uh, proposed fuel and purchase power adjustments and other miscellaneous rate changes. Uh, uh, the purpose is to implement the changes to the fuel and purchase power adjustment uh, rate uh, schedule 461 and to miscellaneous and to various other uh, rate schedules. Very good. This is uh, Vice President Easterling explaining. Uh, the various changes. <coughs> Any uh, questions or comments from board members? Any from the public? Seeing none, please call the roll. Barrett? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Motion carried. Item number eight. <coughs> Resolution number 5982. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the proposal of PIC Group, Inc. in the amount of $898,799.09 to provide labor for the removal and replacement of low-temperature tubing on the North Omaha Station Unit No. 4 boiler is the lowest and best bid received on request for proposal No. 4159 and is hereby accepted, and the bond or letter of credit of such bidder is hereby approved. So moved. Director Weber, please. As you just heard, the uh, purpose of this item is to provide the labor only for the removal and replacement of sections of tubing in the low temperature superheater uh, on the North Omaha Unit 4 boiler. Sections of this tubing of this boiler have been evaluated and there are certain, certain sections that are recommended for replacement in order to main, maintain a reliable operation of the unit. Installation of OPPD supplied materials will occur during the scheduled maintenance outage that will begin on January 25th, 2014. Five bids were received, one bid was withdrawn after the bid opening, 
four bids were technically and legally responsive. The engineer's estimate for this work is one million dollars. So this action that's asked is to authorize the Board of Directors to award a contract to PIC Group Incorporated for the amount of $898,799.09. I don't know where the nine cents <laughs> I'm sure it's important. <laughs> I'm sure it's important. Comments from board members. I'm just verification that uh, this boiler can be used for natural gas also. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. Wouldn't want to use that much, use it, utilize that much money if we can't use it for natural gas. Any other questions or comments from board members? Any from the public? Seeing none, please call the roll. Derek? Yes. Gay? Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Kavanaugh. Yes. Motion carried. Prior to my asking for President Gates' uh, State of the Utility Report, I'm going to take this opportunity as chairman to give the board's extreme thanks to all the employees of OPPD, both active and retired, and their families for the sacrifices made to uh, by working over 8 million person hours to protect and restart Fort Calhoun Nuclear Station. The overtime, evenings, weekends, holidays, and sacrifices they have made to get us to this point are admirable and it gives me great pride to thank them for their hard work and efforts. And thanks to Exelon too, Mr. Corpossi, for your efforts in this regard as well. But as we, uh, as we know, this is a commitment going forward and we look forward to that uh, uh, achieving the state of excellence that we know it's going to be required. But I just wanted to take a point, to make a point to thank uh, everybody that participated, which is basically the OPPD family, in getting this job done. Job well done. Thanks. President Gates, if you'd like to give your report now. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll start through the corporation as we normally do with generation. Uh, central Maintenance, which is our central maintenance uh, group, uh, worked on Fort Calhoun outage, the com uh, combined cycle, one of our uh, com combustion terminal, rather, number one overhaul. <coughs> we had a high priority to get all these things done because we should be coming up on a high usage period here in January and February, depending on the temperatures. Uh, obviously, yesterday wasn't indicative, but uh, we're going to be seeing some colder temperatures. We need to have our units ready to go. Uh, capacity at all our uh, stations remained high over this availability period and maintenance preparation going forward. It's also good to report on our renewable energy. Uh, we're up to 8.4% with our existing resources right now, with another 200 coming on early next year and then 400 the following year. The uh, really impressive part for this last month of operation on the renewable resources was our capacity factor, which was 56.7%. Uh, which is very high, uh, obviously a windy November, but that helped a lot to get that in. Uh, we're doing a lot of work uh, getting ready for the SPP entrance, as uh, Vice President Easterlin indicated. Uh, that's going to be a, a challenge for us and an opportunity both going forward into 2014. And you'll be hearing a lot more about uh, the Southwest Power Pool as we move into 2014. Regarding to Fort Calhoun, uh, we did do a lot of work in preparation for the startup of the unit and has been uh, talked about and reported before. We did receive permission from the Nuclear Regulatory Permission to restart the unit. Uh, that startup, uh, to give you an up-to-date, uh, the reactor was restarted last night at uh, 6.48 in the evening. All physics tests are complete, which is checks we do to make sure that the uh, core is reloaded as we would expect. Those results are all good. We're in the process of raising the reactor power to 2% now, and we'll start warming the main turbine generator in preparation for uh, putting that uh, turbine generator onto the grid and start generating power. A lot of testing still needs to be done on the turbine generator, but we anticipate uh, that generator will be on soon. If you look at the operation for Calhoun and the three major efforts that we need to uh, we need to make sure we're doing very well, uh, we've accomplished all three in the last uh, in the near term. That would be operational safety. As I reported last month, uh, NRC came in on an operational assessment and uh, watched our operators operate uh, in the first heat up and concluded that uh, our processes and people and equipment were in great shape to operate the plant. Uh, we were also being observed as we go through this restart, both reactor restart, turbine generator restart, uh, by the regulatory commission, and have had good comments on the performance uh, of our team so far. So that's the first thing you got to do, is be able to operate the plant safely. Second is, if you do need to do anything extraordinary, you want your emergency plan to work well. 
And we had a, a drill on our emergency response on December 3rd, and it involved essentially the whole company as well as the states and counties. Uh, that went very well. There were no issues out of that uh, other than minor corrections that we need to make going forward. And the third major element of operating a nuclear power plant is that it requires extraordinary security in some cases, and uh, that uh, was also tested by drills, and those were passed successfully with no issues. So the three levels of operational safety, our emergency planning and security have all been uh, verified and are doing very well. So with that, uh, we are confident in the operation of the plant. Uh, we have reviewed that, and I want to also thank the entire team at OPPD. It wasn't just the people at Fort Calhoun. Our entire company was involved. Uh, thank the Board of Directors for your support uh, through this effort, and uh, a lot of the input we got along the way was very valuable to us. This is a journey to excellence. Uh, we're not taking a break. There is no delay. Um, Mr. Cordoposi and I had a conversation. Uh, we did one handshake, and now it's uh, on to the next level and on to excellence. So we're not taking a break going forward. In our transmission and distribution system, and there's a theme here on being prepared uh, that your utility is exercising, we uh, had a drill on November 13th and 14th uh, that was extensive in how we would handle any transmission issues in our area. And we do that so we are prepared, and, and the folks in transmission and distribution do an incredible job. Uh, it's been some very cold weather recently. We've had some work we had to do near our North Omaha station. <clears throat> I had a chance to uh, watch them doing that last Saturday and talk to them. Uh, they're incredibly talented, incredibly dedicated individuals that serve you in keeping the lights on in a most direct way in the transmission and distribution area. So those, those folks uh, have participated in this drill and, and assure you that we're ready to handle any transmission issues that may occur in our area, another way of being prepared to make sure the lights stay on. A big project that we're doing that involves our T&D group is the new Stratcom building, which is a very large facility, uh, which is being built on the Offutt Air Force Base site. We're putting in new substations for that. The first one's about 20% complete. And we'll continue to work on that to make sure that the reliable power is there for Offit and subsequently that new Stratcom building, which is a great deal for Nebraska. On, as a note on that group, and uh, personnel safety is very, very high on our list. We're going to complete the best year uh, we've ever had on industrial safety here at, at OPPD. And one group in particular, our substation system protection group, went uh, 223 days since the last uh, human performance issue. And the old record is 218, so they continue to drive that. In regard to finance, uh, it's almost an understatement to hear the report that was given by our CFO today. Um, that's a tremendous amount of work, again, of the whole company, but focused on the finance and budgeting group to put this together in our rate group. Um, no rate increase uh, going forward into 14, despite all the other efforts that I've talked that we've done. And uh, the finance group has done a great job in, in uh, preparing that as well as uh, doing the analysis we need to keep our our rates uh, low, and in this case, a zero increase going forward. With regard to our customers and just some highlights that are going on out there, um, the Corps of Engineers uh, continues to adjust releases from the Gavin's Point Dam. That's our nearest dam. Uh, they're at about 18,000 on December 7th. I believe they're about 16,000 right now, and they'll be heading to 12,000. We're prepared for that. It has not affected the operation of any of our units right now, but we watch that closely. Uh, we did assist in getting a great economic development piece, All Metals Market. They have invested about $2.4 million in a machine that takes a lot of electricity because if you can picture this, it takes like a pickup, crushes it into scrap metal, and then in a matter of minutes, and then uh, vaporizes some of that. So it takes a lot of our product, and uh, the economic development group did a great, great, uh, great job of making sure they stayed here in our area. And in that line, Tim Burke will now be the chair of the Economic Development Council for the Omaha Partnership with the Omaha Chamber. And Tim O'Brien, our economic development manager, will chair the site uh, targeted advisory group for 2014. So we'll be into economic development in a big way. The Power Review Board on December 6th did approve OPPD's charter, which changed our, our districting. And the, and the PRB at that time complimented OPPD on the process and the result of that going forward. <coughs> we do have a, on an annual basis, we name an engineer that's an outstanding engineer and part of the dream team, career dream team. Maurice Kimsey is, a, is an engineer that got that award this year, for that recognition, and uh, transmission and distribution planning. So they'll be the representative there. Uh, and that's a great effort, that dream and do it uh, piece going forward is very, very important. 
Sherry Hutcherson, our Vice President, uh, Corporate Services and Chief Admin Officer, is the co-chair co of the NAACP Freedom Fund Banquet on December 8th. The theme of that was We Shall Not Be Moved, so congratulations, Sherry. OPPD's Jeff Hansen, who works in our corporate comm group, was recognized by the prof as a professional of the year in the public affairs area. And then representatives of Metropolitan Community College, the University of Nebraska at Omaha, and Bellevue University met with OPPD employees who are active or retired in the military on November 6th and 7th here at Energy Plaza, also at our Elkhorn site in North Omaha. They'll be doing that in 2014 at Fort Calhoun in Nebraska City. And they shared information about how services and support uh, they can provide them and their dependents as they get out of uh, serving our nation or continue to serve our nation in the Guard and are deployed at this time. That concludes the report. Thank you, President Gates. Uh, this time we uh, welcome the opportunity for public comment on other uh, items of district business. Sure. John Pollock, 1412 North 35th Street, Omaha. Well, as you can tell, winter has already started. Uh, this uh, pattern that we're in uh, looks to continue for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got uh, actually uh, a, a northern jet stream that's uh, been plunging down over the Plains states and giving us uh, frequent cold air. That's going to continue. Uh, we have a uh, unusually active southern jet stream that it's been cutting off into loops, not just over the U.S., but actually around the globe at 30 to 35 degrees north latitude. Uh, that's also responsible for the well-publicized snow that they had over Jerusalem lately. We've got to watch that thing because if it moves north, we're talking uh, snow and or icing for our area. Uh, as it is, we might be getting some requests for help from our southern neighbors as they have to deal with that stuff. Uh, if you want, uh, we're between uh, the storm tracks, Alberta Clippers to our north, the other ones to our south. If you want a white Christmas, uh, Sioux Falls, or perhaps Topeka. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, for those of you who are uh, wondering what, uh, uh, if we're really getting global warming, if we keep having cold winters like this, the, uh, the whole cold pattern is severely displaced to, uh, in the northern hemisphere, is displaced to this side of the northern hemisphere from the central U.S. over to the North Atlantic. And on the Asian side, they're a lot warmer than normal. Uh, in addition, uh, for a meteorologist like me, uh, I saw a lot of this type of pattern from the early 1970s to the mid-1980s. And we were in colder temperatures then on the same pattern. Uh, some of you may recall this is the 30th anniversary of the 1983 cold spell where we didn't get above zero from December 16th until Christmas. I had a t-shirt that said I survived December of 83. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, <laughs> quite pertinent. I in my tractor three times to feed one pen of cattle. I can believe it. That was a really tough one. Uh, so that's, that's where we are on the, uh, the weather. My hunch, and it's only a hunch, is that uh, we've got a uh, warm water pool in the North Pacific that I think is liable to stabilize this pattern for much of the winter. If that happens, uh, we're not going to be getting a lot of snow in the uh, central northern Rockies, and we'll be going into the uh, um, 2014 uh, flow year kind of dry. Uh, one last comment regarding Fort Calhoun. Uh, I agree with the uh, published comments in the World Herald from David Lockbaum of the Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you for your time. Morning. Morning. David Corbin, 1002 North 39th Street. Uh, as uh, John gives you the weather report, I just uh, want to take an opportunity to uh, uh, tell you about some of the things I've been watching in the, the media and the press. Uh, Bill McKibben, who's the co-founder of uh, 350.org, 
uh, said we need an energy system that looks like the internet, distributed, shared, and decentralized. Uh, because we're a public power state, we have the opportunity to do things that others can't do. The New York Times on uh, December 5th, uh, they reported that uh, the companies that now are incorporating a carbon price into their strategic planning, these companies include Microsoft, General Electric, Walt Disney, ConAgra, right here, Wells Fargo, DuPont, Duke Energy, Google and Delta Airlines. A quote from that was from Alan Jeffers, an uh, ExxonMobil spokesman, who said, ultimately, we think the government will take action through a myriad of policies that will raise prices and reduce demand of carbon polluting fossil fuels. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I know you know that we believe that the coal plant is ripe for retirement, as the Union of Concerned Scientists says, and as they updated their report to include, still include that. And uh, of course, I'm sure you've all, you're all aware that under a presidential memorandum, uh, each uh, federal agency would have until 2020 to get 20% uh, of its electricity from renewables uh, supplies. So agencies are supposed to build their own facilities when they can or buy clean energy from wind farms and solar facilities. We've already commended you on what you've done with wind and uh, I still think you're sadly uh, behind the times in terms of solar. In Minneapolis, they've now passed a requirement that a certain percent has to be from solar. And here's what, I've, here's what my fear is. Uh, when Alexander Graham Bell uh, had invented the, the phone, sometimes people can underestimate uh, what the new technology is and act slow. But here's his quote. One day, he said back in 1880, one day there will be a telephone in every major American city in the United States. <laughs> Let's not underestimate the technology that we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys all have a lot of time on your hands to write speeches this month? <laughs> <laughs> you were right. You got a lot of people behind you, so let's uh, let's not make it quite so lengthy. Okay. Yeah, we did have time to write speeches. Uh, uh, this is related to your corporate operating plan uh, and the need to be proactive as far as evolving environmental regs. We do continue to applaud you for your purchase of 400 megawatts of wind generation. But as David was saying, I, you know, we wonder, is this going to be enough? Is this going to meet the demand of the future? The president's order to have, um, you know, 20% of renewables by 2020 for all federal agencies and civilian, which includes civilian and military. Um, and I guess, you know, considering how much you are investing or have invested in nuclear and uh, still investing in coal, um, I think some of the concerns of the corporate world are um, planning for future growth on the expectation that the government will force them to pay a price for carbon pollution as a way to control global warming. Um, and according to uh, this Corporation for Environmental Study, part of which David was quoting, he says it's a climate change as a line item. They're looking at it from a rational perspective, making a profit. It drives internal decision making. Companies see that trend as inevitable. What you see here is a hardening of that understanding. That is why companies like Google and Facebook chose Iowa over Nebraska. Nebraska needs to catch up. <coughs> Looking at ConAgra and Offit, their uh, goals for 20 and 25 percent of their uh, energy coming from renewable energy, I think these are something that uh, Nebraska is going to have to deal with. Numerous studies have proven that we can satisfy all of our energy needs through renewable energy sources, <coughs> energy efficiency. It may be a paradigm shift for utilities, but renewable energy, energy efficiency, and conservation can be accomplished fairly quickly. And furthermore, they're both cost effective. Thank you. Cynthia Tiedemann, 7562 Drexel. As a customer and part of your public, I wanted to add my voice calling for OPPD transparency. The public needs to be informed and encouraged to engage before decisions are made. 
One public issue is um, board district boundaries. I was disappointed that the public was not asked to comment on new district lines. Now that these have been developed and voted on by the board and approved at the state level, clear lines delineating these board boundaries should be available. The map on the OPPD um, webpage is too blurry for the public, um, including potential candidates, to read the boundaries. Lastly, these past months you've heard testimony with support of scientific research about old coal plants harming public health, especially children, and causing environmental harm. There have been hints about retiring the North Omaha plant or switching it to gas. Such a decision should not come as a surprise to us. The public should be aware of these discussions. A major public power decision should include the public's input. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Graham Jordison uh, with Omaha Beyond Coal. Uh, I got I to gotta mention that when I saw the uh, news release that Fort Calhoun was approved by NRC the other day, I thought I was losing my mind. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, no, not, not, not really, not really. But I'm sure you're all very proud that Fort Calhoun is, is um, uh, coming back online. Uh, you left a lot of your customers wondering if that was ever going to happen, and a lot of us uh, didn't want to see it happen. But in the end, it is um, happening. And it looks like uh, nearly 500 uh, megawatts of uh, capacity will be back online. Um, you'll be selling a lot of this wholesale. It's worth mentioning that it's a tougher market now um, to sell wholesale uh, energy because your utilities in the region have had time to install uh, other sources of electricity, uh, mainly wind. Um, so, but after spending a billion dollars over 20 years, we'll see if it's worth it. Uh, I want to mention that while all this was going on, uh, it doesn't seem like you've put any money into low-income energy efficiency programs, um, and we still don't really know uh, where the ratepayers' green funds are going. Um, so that's definitely worth mentioning. Uh, one good thing, we applaud you on the 400 megawatts of wind this year. It was a huge accomplishment. Uh, we hope you continue to pursue more wind in the future. Um, but all, So all told, you now have more than enough energy to supply your service territory. Uh, and therefore, I think it's time to address that really dirty thing in North Omaha that we continually come here and talk about, the North Omaha Station. Uh, I'm, not the only one want to see the, I'm not the only one that wants to see North Omaha retired. Um, here with me today are 800 photos of ratepayers across the city. Um, uh, these ratepayers from Omaha, they couldn't be here today um, because uh, they had other things going on, and that's another thing I want to talk about. Uh, this, this isn't an opportunity for real people in Omaha who have lives, uh, families, and work to come and express um, their opinions. We've heard about um, we've heard about an opportunity, a uh, public process for your stakeholders. Um, we're not sure where that's at in its developmental, developmental stages, um, but, but hardly anyone can attend these Thursday meetings. So next year I suggest having your meetings in the evenings when more people can be here. Um, you know, I was thinking today, what if a school teacher wanted to attend one of these meetings? They'd have to take one day off of work a month. They'd have to find a substitute to come in and teach their classes. A lot of people are interested in energy issues. This is a huge interest to a lot of people across Omaha. So I really encourage you next year to think about uh, extending some of your meeting times, moving them up uh, in the evenings when more people can attend. Um, and then finally, one more time, you know, uh, we don't want to continue to come here and ask you to shut down North Omaha Station. We've heard it's in, we've heard it's in the mix. Um, it sounds like it could be in the works hopefully soon. Um, but the decision is worrisome to us because we know that you, when you do make a lot of these decisions, you don't include the public. So, um, you know, let us know. Uh, let's continue to have discussions. Let's have uh, open meetings about North Omaha Station and uh, its fate. So. Here's the new year. Um, yeah, it's been a good one. Um, and I want to say one more thing. Uh, the people in this room um, are some of the biggest supporters of public power in the city. Um, so even though we come here and sometimes we get upset and angry at you all, we all really appreciate the work that you do. And we all are um, really happy that we have public power in our state. So thank you. Um, I'm Crystal Craig, 70, uh, 7110 South 76th Street in La Vista. Um, and I have 
I'm bearing some gifts from Santa. <laughs> yeah. He sent me. <laughs> so, upon investigation, you'll find a couple of things. There's some treats in there, and then there's also you've some treats for very good on wind, and we're making some good progress, but there's, um, there's some coal in there because you've been very bad. <laughs> also, um, I mean, yeah, so I mean, that was fun, right? But in all seriousness, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I always try to be positive, you know, I'm not here to beat anybody up. Um, I don't believe that negativity will accomplish anything. I think that we are all here together to work together. Um, this is the public power district and we are all very supportive of public power and the last thing we want to see is privatized and so we are we are trying to um, get we're, we're putting our efforts into involving the community the public um, and as Graham had mentioned it is very difficult for people to come to these meetings so those 800 people in that box right there are silent you know but they're attending and um, they're all making the same statement that they are wanting to see the North Omaha coal plant shut down. And I think that right now is um, a great opportunity now that Fort Calhoun is up and running. Um, I think that we should be able to provide enough power between that and the upcoming wind farm um, to our customers. So I still have the same concerns about the coal plant. Um, you know, it's dirty and it makes people sick. And I mean, you can buy low sulfur coal, you can add lime, you know, to things and, and replace a few things. But I would like to look at it as not only a challenge, but an opportunity for us to, um, you know, we really can be leaders. We're the fourth windiest state in the country. Um, and I, I really think that the wind farm purchase is amazing um, but I think that also now um, now we have our power sources I think that we need to work on efficiency I think that um, if we could make all of the power that is being generated uh, make it to the person that is using it I think we would not require as much energy production um, and as a mother, I am here, um, you know, my, my life is my children and clean energy. It is. You know, I really believe that, I mean, the world is full of issues, you know, but um, the cli climate change is real, you know, and uh, we're really contributing to that by running this North Omaha coal plant. Um, you know, there's a number of studies that have been done. This is one of the top ten dirtiest coal plants in the country. And I just think that this is an amazing opportunity. You know, I'm not, and you all probably know, I'm not exactly thrilled about Fort Calhoun being reopened. However, it is going to provide um, a lot of power. Carbon-free power. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> we'll get in. I'll, I'll let somebody else get into that one. But, um... There's also like uranium mining and things like that. But um, I think that this is a great opportunity to shut down the coal plant because we don't like to come here every month, you know, and we're trying, we're standing out in front with like in the freezing cold. And, and it was super great that you guys brought us coffee. And like, that really was very nice. Yeah, they brought us coffee. Um, so that's great, you know, and I love that we can have a relationship and I can, you know, bring cold chocolates to you guys and we can all laugh about it and you know and you might as well have some fun here but really I'm here for my children and I'm here for my children's children in the future um, and if we do things we need to do them right you know when the, when this wind farm purchase was um, when we found out about it and I found out where it was there was some discussion amongst the environmental community about the placement of this wind farm and was it on prairie 
you know, was it on developed land already? And uh, me and Laverne drove out there to investigate where this was going to be because I feel like I helped to create this wind farm and I'm also responsible for it to make sure that it is, everything is going smoothly. So I'm not, you know, I, I am trying to look at every angle. And after going out there and realizing it all had been farmed and I feel better about it. However, the, my point is that if we are going to invest in something, we need to invest in the future and we need to make sure all of the angles are covered and that we're doing it right. And um, that I think efficiency is not exciting. You know, however, it is a very, it's our most important resource at this point. You've got the additional energy coming from the wind, the clean energy, but now let's work on getting that energy to where it needs to go. And we get it. We, we understand your opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next. Uh, Kathleen Hughes, uh, Omaha, Westgate Road. Um, I, I wasn't planning on, I didn't, I wasn't planning on speaking today. And, but I got my Irish up when I heard the comment about the fact that we're spending too much time writing speeches. And it's very important. This is a very important topic. The name of my company is Save the Earth. I'm really interested in saving the planet, and that's why we're here. We're here because we're concerned about what's happening and all the, the breathing, the, the coal, and everything that's happening. And that's why we're here. That's why we spend time writing speeches. That's why, and I feel bad. I didn't write one this month, but I just want to let you know it's important. We feel it's important. I'm sorry if I offended you. I was just trying to make one. Yep. Very Irish. There you go. That's okay. Laverne. Laverne Drahan, 4728 Cass. Uh, the carbon emissions from nuclear power full life cycle is as much as coal plants, except you pay for it. It's just more expensive. So that is the answer, 2008 study. We've given it to the board already. So um, you really shouldn't be saying that it's um, carbon free because it's just not true. Um, second of all, I have a question. The nuclear power plant's back online. You're all happy and gay. What I have not seen was the first question asked Mr. Gates at the Washington DC meeting at the very first NRC Washington DC meeting he was asked how did the nuclear power plant get to the condition it had become where the federal agency had to swoop in and take it over and do the 0350 committee and find bolts that are too short and stainless steel bearings that aren't stainless steel and all the rest and Mr. Gates told him he was going to do a deep dive and there'd be a report on exactly how the nuclear power plant got into such disrepair. Now, I have not seen anything of that report. Mr. Gates' response on two other meetings was he lost his edge and it was institutional drift when he was asked again about that. So I'm wondering when the deep report of how the nuclear power plant got into disrepair, because I believe if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And since I have not seen any documentation at all that explains why our nuclear power plant became lost three of the four cornerstones of criteria that you have to have. So is that report being worked on? Is it due out any day? Yeah, they, the report you're talking about was briefed in detail at several of the NRC meetings. Uh, we listed all the root causes that we felt uh, contributed to the, uh, to the process. And I know you were there, uh, right. but each one of those uh, listed in detail each of the causes. Okay, thank you. I'll look those up again. Sorry. And um, I'm giving you a DVD because your um, lobbyist seems to be responding to legislation versus leading the legislation. And um, Mr. Tim over there, not Mr. Tim, Tim, I can't remember his name, sorry, um, had said that it was an EPA-driven thing at the last executive meeting, that, that, that how you respond to the coal plant and how you respond is basically EPA-driven. And so when they give you new regulations, you have to respond to them. Well, that report there is called Reinventing Fire, which was given to the President of the United States by Amory Levins and Rocky Mountain Institute. It is the entire blueprint of exactly where the EPA is going. Um, I gave Mr. Obama uh, the original report in 2008 when he was still a senator. I told him he could not be president since he hadn't read it, and he absorbed it very quickly for me. And so these reports, Amory Lovins, Rocky Mountain Institute, I know you're doing a half a million dollar study. These studies have been done. They're over. I've just handed them to you. I really wish you would save some money and, and just implement what we already know, because we already know that efficiency works. Thank you. Have a nice day. And Merry Christmas to everybody, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Anybody?
Anybody else? If not, this meeting's adjourned and Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.